I give honor to Bishop Clark, Bishop Wise, Apostle Sloss, and to all of the great men of God that are here on today. I give honor to Mother Clark, Mother Jones, Evangelist Gaines, Evangelist Fulton, and my little daughter, Sister uh, Missionary Deborah Jones. To all of these great women of God, all of you, our missionaries, our pastors' wives, and my little daughter over there, Sister Sharon. <laughs> Bishop and I claim Luke Jr. And, and Sister Sharon are our children. <laughs> I call them my girl. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To each of you today, Praise the Lord. I esteem all of you highly. Praise the Lord. I don't esteem one over the other. You all have your place in my life. And I thank God for you. You are special. Hey, glory to God. You may see these ladies sitting up here. But I want you to know that you are special. It's not just these little, the one you sit, see sitting here, that we are saying they are special and you are nobody. But in our hearts, we are saying you. Yes, you. You are special. You are so special to me. And I thank God for you. Well, you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't sing my song. Let me say this. It wouldn't be me if I didn't make a joy for Noah. Yeah. And that's what I'm so grateful for that he said he, he, he said, make a joy for Noah. Yeah. Thank God for Sister Cipe all the way from South Africa. Yeah. Thank God for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My sister-in-law. Praise the Lord. We have been just like sisters for many, many years. And I thank God for you. My brother. Where are you, brother? Thank God for you. Praise the Lord. My mother, Hashanu, that is here with us on today. Mother, where are you today? God bless you, mother. God bless you, mother. Thank God for you. Praise the Lord. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus. The Son of God. Yes, it's all hush and sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus. The Son of God, I shall know. Yes, it's all sweet. I shall know. Sweet. Jesus. Jesus. Hashano. Jesus. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. Yes, he's so sweet. Oh. Praise 
the Lord. What is his name today? The name that, that can calm all of our fears, soothe all of our sorrows. Whatever the case may be, we can find the answer in who? Call him like you mean it. I don't hear you saying it like you really know it. Hey! Come on, call him until every yoke is broken. Hey! Glory to God. Son say, I call on Jesus. If you call on him, say he will answer prayer. In my distress, I call on him. And he inclined his ears unto my cry. Hallelujah. And you know all you have to do if you just call him. One thing about Jesus, he know just what you need. He know just where you are. He know just what to do for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, you know, and just say it quietly. Say, Jesus. Fill the room with his presence. Jesus. Head up by your shadow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus. You see, my na 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 you see, praise the Lord. I still sense a lot of kind of kind of a little bit of tight. Hey! Glory! I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that the enemy has a tendency to fight your minds about this. He has a tendency to try to use things to distract you. And that's what I seem to sense. I sense, hey, 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 hey. Hey! You get your minds on and then something come along and distract you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I want you to lift your voice and I want you to say, just say, Jesus. And a calm, sweet voice, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Now I want you to call him just like you're real desperate. My God, I love you today. Oh, I praise you today. I magnify your name today. There is none like you today.
my soul praise you today thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus 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 hallelujah oh bless his name praise god praise god mm, praise god truly today i i'm grateful unto the lord that he has blessed me to be here you know uh we have a tendency to take so many things for granted. I said, no, many of you feel, oh, I just feel so good. and I'll be here. Sometimes maybe say, I almost feel like forever. It'll be like this forever. Praise the Lord. But I want to let you know that a change, a changes can take place. On last year this time, we were here and I was able to stand before you. I had no idea of the things would have taken place between last year and this year. You know, we, 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 we talked about in the different conferences, you know, we talked about uh, how that we were stretching our faith. We talked about... Uh, Remembering, remembering the faithfulness of God. And on last year, I know it was year before last, I think it was, uh, we applied the blood. That we talked about the, the power that was in the blood. And I want you to know that everything that the Lord gives, we need to really take the most earnest heed unto it. I said, because the Lord is not a God that plays. He's not a God that just would just do things or just say something just to occupy the time or fulfill the time. If the Lord gives something, it's a reason. It's, he has a purpose in mind. And we need to, you know, no matter how it may sound to us, we need to take the most earnest heed to it. Because I promise you, if the Lord give it, we are going to need it. That we need it. Whatever he give, we need it. Praise the Lord. And I've had to, I've had to do everything that I stood and told you to do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I told the saints back home that how that, uh, well, most of the people back here at home, they know that I would always stand up and I would tell the people about, put your trust in the Lord. Yeah. If you put your trust in the Lord, yeah. you will never be ashamed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, on last year, in November of last year, the enemy tried me to see if he could make me ashamed. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was attacked on last year. And, well, I've had this problem for over two and a half years. And I was like uh, missionary Clory Cole. I had told the Lord that if he did not remove the growth that I had. And if he did not lead me as to what to do, I told the Lord, I said, well, I'll stay at home and die. Because I'm the type of person I can't do anything comfortably without knowing the will of God. But if I know the will of God, I don't care what it is, I can face it. So I said, well, you will lead me, you will heal me, or you would lead me. And how the Lord gave me to go on a 40 days fast. And after the 40 day fast, I was getting real sick. I was getting sicker and sicker, look like. And after that fast, the Lord spoke to me and told me about the doctor. And I got up and made the appointment. It was on a Saturday when he told me about the doctor. And I got up that Monday and I made an appointment to see the doctor. But anyway, in going through the tests that they carried me through, when they finished my diagnosis, it was cancer. And how that, they thought it was advanced cancer because the growth had gotten so large and I had had it for over two and a half years. 
But I want you to know that as they began to test me, take me through different tests to see how far the uh, cancerous cells had spread it, that as I would go through every test, how the Lord would drop his word into my spirit and how that the major test that they gave me and when they put me in the grad big old machine and you know how they push you through to scan everything within your body, you know. And as they began to scan everything within my body, how the Lord gave me the 23rd number of Psalms. And I laid there, hallelujah. And I would just, hallelujah. And I would just say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you know, it just, just kind of make it long, make it, make the, you know, kind of cut it off a little bit. And how do we get it? When I got down there to the part that says, you know, that thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Hallelujah. And you know, I stopped there. Because at, at that time, he just kept saying it. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what are you saying? Your rod and your staff comforts me. He said, my strength. And my support comforts thee. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, they carried me through that test. And how that the doctor had told me, he said, well, what I can see so far, said, you're going to need at least 12 treatments before we can even do surgery. You got to take at least 12 treatments. But how that, when he carried me through that test and he came back in the room, his eyes looked so funny. And he said, Guess what? I said, what? He said, uh, it hasn't spread in anywhere. Yee! Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, praise the Lord. And it went on and on. And praise the Lord. But finally, I had a visitation from the Lord. I was lying in my bed one night. And how that an angel in the form of a doctor. Some of you have already heard it, but some have not heard it, so let me just tell it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But how an angel came into my room in the form of a doctor, and he, he came in and he went over, went over like something like he was watching his doing something like washing his hands and he turned his face sideways toward me. He looked at me and he said, I came to remove the cancerous cells. And I stopped. You know, I was puzzled. I said, you, he came to remove the cancerous cells. So the first thing I thought, that the growth was gone. He came to remove the growth. But he said, I came to remove the cancerous cells. See, it's those cells that go all over your body. It's not so much the growth. But when I noticed and the growth was still there, hallelujah, I told my husband, I said, honey, I said, uh, I had a visitation last night from the Lord, and I said that he said that he came to remove the cancerous cells. And my husband said, he said, well, i tell you one thing. He said, I believe it. He said, and one thing for sure, he said, uh, the doctors would say exactly what the Lord has said. If the angel said, I came to remove the cancerous cells, he said, when the doctor examined you, he's going to say what? The same thing. Praise the Lord. Well, anyway, it went on and praise the Lord and how that, that growth began to just shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. Hallelujah. It got so small and it just, just got real small. And when it got so small, they told me, they said, okay, he said, now we can do surgery. Well, I went on and I had the surgery. But after the surgery, it was two days later, they called me from the clintus, uh, and they, they, from the clintus, and they said these words. They said, we don't see any need for any more treatments. We don't see any need for nothing else. So we did not find any cancerous cells nowhere in your body. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I tell y'all, we serve a mighty, 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 mighty God. Praise the Lord. And, and one thing that I say, you know, I, I, I know that he is able. The Lord is able to, to do whatever is needed to be done. We serve a God that is able to do it. All right, uh, the theme for today is chosen women with an unction to function. Which is saying uh, chosen women anointed for a specific job. Chosen women anointed for a specific job. Praise the Lord. And we're going to base our thought for today. We're basing it from St. John, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 4. And it says, And Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, this is the word that I really want you to take notice. Of. And that is this very fourth verse. And it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Praise the Lord. I really feel an urgency in my spirit today that the time is really running out. And whatever we are to do for the Lord, that now is the time. You know, while I was uh, uh, unable to be in worship service, and I laid there and I thought about the many prayer meetings that I could have gone to that I didn't go. I thought about the many service, worship services that they had, that we had, that I could have gone. But oh, I just don't feel like it today. I am so tired. I ran and I ran all yesterday. I had to go to the mall. I had to go to the grocery store. I had to cook. I had to do this. I had to do that. And I didn't feel like going to church that Wednesday night. I didn't feel like going to church that Sunday. I stayed at home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And how that I really wished, I desired, oh, I wish I could go. I wish I could go. I wish I could be in service. Praise the Lord. But you know, there was some time that I had wasted. And then the Lord spoke this scripture into my spirit. He said that, that we must work the work of him that sent us while it is day. The night coming when no man what, can work. Praise the Lord. And you know, the term uh, 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 of life, when you think about life, life refers to why we are yet living. Life also refers to why you can get up and why you can do. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is what? Day. While I can do. While I'm in, my, in good health. While I, 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 I have my, like the preacher said the other night, while I have my right mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need to do what I can do what? Now. 
while it is day, while I can, because the night is going to come. Just as sure as you live, look, death is going to come. Just as sure as you live, it's a possibility that the time may come what? when you can't do. And whether you realize it or not, but what you do or do not do have eternal consequence. Whatever the Lord has given unto us to do, it has eternal consequence. Which means one thing that one day, every last one of us must stand before God and give an account unto God for the things that we have done in our flesh. While you live, you're going to stand before God one day, women. You can waste your time doing this and doing that, acting this way and acting that way. But the time is going to come that you must stand before a just God. Whether you finish your course or whether you did not finish it, you must stand before God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And why so many, so many, I, I hope none of you, not any of you guilty of this, but why so many are saying what? Tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I, I, I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it, you know. Like I heard someone say, next time. But do you not know that tomorrow may very well be too late? We must do all that we can, what? Now. I must work the work of him that sent me. Wow, what? It is what? What have you been putting off? What have you been putting off? The Lord has given unto us what he would have us to do. He tell us to, I heard Sister Deborah talking about love, talking about the love today and you know, I, I thank God because, you know, there was one time when I was, you know how we do when we have not matured in the Lord and, you know, the enemy can confuse us about whether or not, you know, we're in the will of God or not, you know, all that, you know. And now that one time I was praying, I said, oh, God, I said, you know, show me my heart like you see it. You know, I was just crying out to God, show me my heart like you see it. It's a good thing to do that anyway. Because God may see your heart in another way from which you see it. But anyway, while I was praying, asking God to show me my heart as he, you know, saw it. And I saw myself in, 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 in a dream and, and how that some uh, uh, preachers and their wives have come into town. And, and how that uh, we were taking them around, you know, uh, you know, just taking them around over the city. And how in this dream... I was hanging out of the car. The car was, 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 was moving. And I was hanging all out of the car trying to get some fruits for the preachers and, the preachers and their wives that was in the, in, 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 in the car with us. And I woke up. I said, God, I said, what in the world did that mean? I'm hanging all out of the car <laughs> trying to get something good for those, you know, for, for, for those preachers that was with us. And he said, this is how all men shall know that you are my disciple because you have love one to another. And to me, I thought that was, you know, to me, I didn't take that to be, you know, too, too big. I said, just, just love. <laughs> Praise, but love, really, love is of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and that is the only way that, that we can prove that we are, we, we are his, we are his disciples, because we do have what? Love. That love, what? One. one to the other. Praise the Lord, you know. Yes. So I just thank the Lord, you know, just a good thing. That's the major thing is to have what? Is to have love. Praise the Lord. You can't do enough to me to make me hate you. I may get upset with you for a while, but it doesn't take but a few minutes. 
before I'm pleased with you. And I'm willing to go right back to the sister, y'all. We can't act like this. Let's forgive one another. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord, you know. Praise the Lord. But anyway, today, if you are here, you know, on this morning, Julie, the Lord is talking to you, you know, on today. Praise the Lord, you know, that whatever we are to do for God, that we must do it now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. While we can, you know, we must do it now. Yeah. Praise the Lord, you know. I want you to listen to me, and I want you to really think about this. If God told you today that you can do whatever you have a burden for, and he will not let you fail. What would you do? If God said, you can do whatever you really just have a burning desire, really have a burden in your heart for, and I'm not going to let you fail, what would you do. That thing that you find great pleasure in, that when you are doing it, that you are just excited and you are just so happy when you do it. Well, I want you to know that that could very likely be your work. That that you have a burning desire to do. That that you have a burden to do. I believe in my heart today that that is your work. Because so many ask the question, look, I don't know what my work is. I don't know. And that makes it a little bit more easier for us when you know what do you have in your heart that you want to do? Like my little granddaughter, you know, it really just, it, it really bothered me because I wanted her to go to college to be something else. You know, go to college to be a teacher. Go to college to, you know, to, to maybe just do something else. But don't go to school to cook. <laughs> but she wanted to go to college. She went to school to cook. Because that is exactly what she has a burning desire to do, to cook. And she just loved. She came to us uh, on this weekend. She said, Grandmama, do you want me to cook and bring some food to the hotel and put it in the hospitality room that the ministers and their wives can go in there and eat after service? She has a burning desire. To serve the people of the Lord. the Lord. Women, I want you to know today that your job may not be behind this pulpit, this, this pulpit or this pulpit, whatever we. <laughs> it may not be in any of the five full ministries. Because most times when we have a burning desire, we feel an unction from the Spirit. Most times we think, oh, I got to come. You know, we call them missionaries. Oh, I got to go put on my white dress. I'm a missionary. And <laughs> your call and your work just may not be a teacher, a prophetess, or you know, yes. it may not be any of those things. Yes. I said, your work just may be, and, and, and if you have a lot, have children at home, that's why your work is. Yes. So many times we are running, trying to get up before the people. Wanting the people to look up to us and make us feel important. When all the time we are missing the great work 
that God has given unto us right there in our homes. Mary, the mother of Jesus, did great work, y'all. Great work. You may say, well, what did she do, Mother Turner? The first thing she did was she, had a, she lived a devoted life to God. A consecrated life, what? To God. And she gave birth to the Messiah, which was Jesus Christ. While we are running and trying to make, don't y'all get mad with me now, put on our white dresses. Marge around with the missionaries. Hey, 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 hey. Give me a little knees, brother Bobby. Get them stirred high. Hey. high, high. Thank you. While we want to kind of marge around with the missionary. Many times you're overlooking the work that God has given unto you. You don't know what that little boy in your house can become. You don't know what that little girl in your house may become. If you just spend that right time training those children. Not I got to go to prayer today, y'all. Y'all stay at home now. Prayer time. You know, I, I, I saw some years ago that you how that we were just running as we thought for the Lord. And we're just leaving our children behind. But I believe the Lord want us to take a run along with us. That's one thing about me when I was growing up. My mother was sanctified. And they had a lot of services at the church. Even at Taryn service all night long. But my mother would bring, a, they would get a, some quills. And they would bring quills to the church. And they would put the little girls on one side. And the little boys on the other side. But all night long, I was right there. Where my mother could peep over and see what I was doing. And you know, I, I love to see the saints. I, I was just, I, I guess it had been in me, even from birth. It was something fascinating about the saints. When I was a little girl, you know, and their hands would go up and come down. I said, my God, them folks act like they have electricity in their hand. And I would sit up, I, all the other little children would be sleeping, and I'm sitting up looking because I wanted to see what those saints were doing. But all oh, because she took that time because she didn't leave me behind. At the age of seven years old, I never forget it. At the age of seven, I was sitting in the church. And like I said, the hands was going up and coming down. Hallelujah. And I, I, I liked that. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, one day, I want to be sanctified. One day, hallelujah, I want to be one of them. That my hands can just automatically go up and come down. But it all happened because my mother took time out to bring me up in the way of the Lord. And you know what? You know... <laughs> And I, 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 I will just encourage all of you young women, y'all, that have children, take time. 
Y'all take time. Don't let nothing be more important to you than taking time with your children. And you know what? I, I think so much about, you know, the husbands. And you know that, you know how that the Lord has so beautifully, you know, given, given me a good husband, a, a sweet husband, a, a good provider. Praise the Lord. And you know how that we need to learn how to love. When I said, no, let me say that, you know, what well, love, yes, honor and respect our husbands. You know, so many times you wonder, why is he so bitter with me? He just can talk to me any kind of way. A lot of times, you know what that have come from? It has come from you have dishonored him so much. You've disrespected him so much. I tell you, I made your husband ashamed. Husband thrives on you making him feel like he's important. Making him feel like that he's somebody. Making him feel like that he is the head of his house. He just thrives on that. But when you are so disrespectful unto him, do what you want to do. Don't even consider him in nothing that you decide to do. You can make that man what just so ashamed until he become bitter with you. And what some of you need to go back home because some of you here today have been just like that. You come to church. I've seen this happen among the young women. You come to church and you get to yapping, 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 yapping. All over here, all over there. And your husband said, come on, let's go. I'll go when I get ready. Go on. I feel like that that's not properly honoring your husband. And then when he started talking to you, what you say? Huh? Then you upset about it. And you need to go home and tell your husband, honey, I'm sorry that I disrespected you in the way that I disrespected you. I dishonored you in the way in which I have dishonored you. I spent the money when you said don't spend it. I did a lot of things when you said what? Don't do it. And I want you to forgive me because I respect you, what? As the head, what? Of this house. Believe it, try it. And I promise you it won't be long before your husband changes his whole attitude toward you. I must do the work of him that sent me. While it is day. Praise the Lord. And I just want to tell y'all this. You know, this, I'm, I'm just going to tell y'all the thing that's on my heart to tell you. I said, you know, so many, so many in, in this day and time, you know, so many have tried to be like so many of these other women until you fail to be yourself. And even those that minister, you know, you're so, so hard. So, I mean, you're trying so hard to say it like Marilyn Hickey said. You got to say it like Joyce Myers. You got to act like Paula White. Uh, what this girl name? Juanita Bynum. And you be so afraid that you're not going to act like them till you can't act like yourself. And therefore, what? You're so very uncomfortable because you're trying to be somebody else rather than just being what? Who you are. So I just made up in my mind, look, I may not be like any of them. But I sure can feel real comfortable being what? Margaret Turner. And I think a whole lot of you ladies, you, you're going to be better off when you realize it's all right to be you. 
You may not, you, you, you may not have that little, uh, 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 it, it, I say in ministry, in ministry. You may not have that little praise the Lord. You may have a big mouth like me. Praise the Lord. But I've learned how not to be ashamed of who God has made me. And I found that I'm more comfortable being me. But now this is another thing on my heart that I want to tell y'all. Look, it's right to chastise your children. But let me tell you something. It's a way to do it. Some of y'all walk around popping with your fists in their backs. Slapping them. God don't want you to provoke your children like that. Stop taking your fist and popping your child in their back. Just snatching on them like they animals. Take some time and show your children some love. Look, I'm a hero. What time is y'all? What time is it? Oh, 12 o'clock. Praise the Lord. We're doing good. Praise the Lord because the men don't have to leave out of here until 1. Praise the Lord. And I thank God that they are. They are here, you know, with us today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But you know, again, I say unto you that the Lord has given unto us great works in our home. Praise the Lord. And we need to find ourselves, what? Doing the work that God has given unto us, what? You know, to do. Praise the Lord, you know. And and, and, and the reason I said that is because that there is a, a war that is going on against the families. It's a war going on against the families. All around us, there is a war going on against the families. And whether we like it or whether we don't, God has given us a place on the battlefield. We have a place, ladies, on the battlefield. It's a war going on in the families. And God has looked on us and given us a place on the battlefield. I said, honey, can't nobody reach the heart of God like we can. We can get out there and we can just cry. Oh, God. We know how to reach him. And we need to spend time, what? Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the study, what? Of the word. Hallelujah. Spend time just sharing that that we know to share. Hallelujah. Because God specializes in using just plain old ordinary women just like us. You don't have to be, you know what others may think, just great. He will use just a plain old ordinary woman just like you. And we find that the Bible is full of stories of ordinary people who went to war in prayer, armed with faith and the word of God, and won. May not have a, a melodious voice where you can sing like an angel. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But I'm going to war. Hallelujah. In prayer, and my prayers are armed what? with faith. And the word of God. The Bible said the grass withered. The flowers faded. But the word shall stand what? Forever. And I want you to know today that if God can use our mouth, you know, a lot of us saying, you know, well, look, you know, I don't, you know, this and that and other, you know. But if God can just use your mouth, women, yeah. what a great work. Yeah. I want y'all to say with me, if God, if God can use my mouth, use my mouth. What, a what a great work. Glory to God. James tell us that he or she who controls their tongue can also control themselves in every way. 
Say it again. If God can use my tongue. my tongue. Hallelujah. That is a great, great work. And you know that helped all of us not to even not to feel bad today. Amen. Because it let us let all of us know that we have a work. Yeah. And one of the good works is what? Controlling this tongue. Yeah. Psalms 33. No, it's 35. Psalms 35 and 28 says. My tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. And I was sitting up in the church uh, one Sunday, and my uh, bishop was ministering, and he, he, I looked over uh, across from where the scripture that he was using, and it was this particular scripture right here. But where it says, my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. The word uh, just magnified before my eyes that says spread. And I thought it said my tongue shall spread thy righteousness. And when I looked at it again, it said speak. And I thought then, I said, Lord, I said, I wonder what do these tongues spread? What is your tongue spreading? The word said, my tongue shall speak of the righteousness of God. Now, what is your tongue spreading? Ladies, I want you to know that a, a spoken word in due season can bring salvation to a lost soul. A spoken word in due season can bring salvation to a lost soul. And a spoken word out of season can do a whole lot of damage. What is your tongue spread? It was a young lady over 30 years ago that just decided that she wanted to be one of those that spread it, the righteousness of God. And she had gone to church that Thursday night and she got real blessed in the service. The pastor had preached and she was all excited about the word of God. And she got on the phone and she called me and she said, oh, Sister Turner. She said, guess what? Because, see, I've been going to the sanctified church all my life. And so she was in another church. But when she got saved, she was so excited about being saved, she thought that she would call me and tell me, you know, just help, help you know, spread the goodness of God. So she called me and she began to tell me about, you know, what the pastor had preached that night and how good it was and she was so excited about it. And I had to go on pretend because I had got out of church then, y'all. And I had to go on pretend to her like I was, you know, really still saved. So I said, oh, glory, hallelujah. You don't mean, oh, praise the Lord. But I tell you, that word was convicting me down in my soul. And I got this, the Bible and I began to read. What she was telling me that the preacher had preached that night. And it was through that. Because I had received, I, I may have told it before, but you know it says, what shall we say then? Shall we, shall, shall we continue to live in sin that the grace of God may abide? Well, see, I had been running, I had started hanging around some more people. <laughs> My sister-in-law was sitting back there. And, and, and their teaching was, you can do what you want to do now. Go on and do what you want to do. But never go to bed without saying, I'm sorry, Lord. Get on back up the next day, do it all over again, but come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Well, that sixth chapter of Romans convicted me. I 
Pastor, that's a lot because I enjoyed that. That's all. Oh, you can sin. <laughs> you can do what you want to do. With all you have to do is just tell God you're sorry. With no desire to change, you know, but just let him know you're sorry. And that was real good. That was comfortable. I mean, that was nice. But when I read that sixth chapter wrong, I was convicted that that wasn't true. I was, it, it, it convicted me, and I was convinced that that's not true. You got to come out of your sin. Saying I'm sorry with no, with no intention of coming out. God don't hear that stuff. But it all happened because a young lady decided to spread the righteousness, the love of God. And today, I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's been over 30-some years ago. And it happened because she opened her mouth to spread the goodness, what? Of God. So, you know, to be able to control your tongue, Every one of y'all in here got a job. You have work. And one thing is what? Keeping my tongue. Controlling what? My tongue.